all that societal, cultural stuff plays no role in me just being on the bike and having a grand old time. What's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Megan Stark and yours is not. Probably. You're probably getting a lot of wind noise on this video. It is a little bit blustery today, but it is above 60 degrees Fahrenheit, so guess what? We're out in these streets. So today I wanted to talk about uh, some of the differences between male and female motorcyclists. And those fall under kind of two general categories. One of them being physically. Some of this stuff will be somewhat obvious, but maybe also not. <laughs> and some of it is societally, society. Society. society, you know, society. Or socially or experientially. <laughs> this was all kind of inspired by a somewhat snarky <laughs> comment that I received on one of my videos. It's kind of funny because I don't think the person actually watched the video because the thing they said, uh, the video wasn't about that at all. <laughs> They're basically talking about how like, why don't you just try being a motorcyclist instead of a female motorcyclist. The video was about being a female content creator is about introversion and content production online. <laughs> but alas, I think he just uh, read the title and had to say something. Usually I ignore stuff like that, but I thought that it was kind of a, it would have been a missed opportunity not to make this into a discussion point. For a decent amount of time, I didn't really want to talk about specific uh, womanness on the bike. I just wanted to talk about being on the bike and obviously my, my experience would end up informing me anyways and it would just be a casual little thing. But I feel like being a little bit more specific in this video because I think it could be interesting and helpful and then maybe some other people can mention things in the comments whether you're a gal or not or have an experience with gals or not. Let's get into it. Well first, I'm going to tell you where I am. I'm at the North End. I don't know if they officially called this the North End or if it's just that little water tower with this uh, apartment complex over here and that's why they called it the North End. <laughs> Some people call it Condo Canyon. There's a lot of places to live, there's a grocery store, there's a couple cute things around here. And I'm gonna take you through this kind of funny little back street that takes you by Lakefront Brewery, which is a, uh, I'll just wait, which is a local Wisconsin microbrewery. I don't know what, I guess I don't know what constitutes a microbrewery. Maybe it's just a regular brewery. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. I'm just like always asking you guys for conversations. I'm like, I don't know, and I'm not gonna look it up right now. I'm on the motorcycle. So the first major distinction between male and female motorcyclists tends to be stature. Uh, by and large, women tend to be smaller than male motorcyclists when it comes to height, inseam, weight, all sorts of things that play a role in your comfort level with the bike and maybe which bikes are better suited for you. So, I think someone's gonna walk there. Yep. <laughs> so that, that plays a big role. Oh, this is, this is not ideal. <laughs> I'm gonna be very careful through here. Maybe I'm going too fast. Um, this plays a role in the kinds of bikes that you gravitate towards, the kinds of bikes that suit you best. So here's like from Brewery. I wonder if I can kind of, I'm gonna just zip over here and oh my God, look at this driveway. Ah, I hate this. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. Well, I don't know. It's kind of too hot. I'm really bundled up. I'm bundled up for the ride, but I don't really need to be that bundled up. So one thing that might be a factor for you if you're a smaller rider is uh, your inseam, of course. So the length of your legs and, and what bikes you can flat foot on or what bikes you might need to be tiptoe on. And people do manage on bikes that they can't flat foot on, but I think most women, and especially if you're a beginner female rider, you kind of want to flat foot. You want to be able to handle that bike. And it'll just take away a little bit more anxiety if you know that you can ride that bike and not have to worry about uh, making contact with ground because you're not always on perfectly flat ground. Sometimes you're on divots and stuff and I know I was on my tiptoes when I rented a Multistrada. It was like two inches taller than my inseam and that was like the cap for me, uh, the seat height on that and there were a few moments when I would be 
going across a dip or, or um, working away from the curve, curb of a street. And then I would be just like hitting nothing but air. <laughs> so sometimes um, that's a factor in being a female motorcyclist is whether or not you can touch the ground on your bike. So I think that gravitates quite a few women to, to Harley. That can accommodate a lot of different shorter riders. Ooh, the BMW, very nice. And another stature thing with being a female rider that I think not a lot of people think about is the difference in size of your hands. Now, funnily enough, I kind of have like big hands. I don't know, you probably can't tell. But, but when it comes to getting gloves and stuff, I can do a men's small or a women's medium in gloves because I have, you know, large-ish hands and I have long fingers, but tons of women have like teeny tiny hands. And I remember there was a, uh, this sound, oh my gosh. The things are going wrong in this little moto vlog. I'll wait until we pass this before getting into it. My riding course, I took a riding course in 2016. My class was about 50-50 male-female, which is pretty cool. And one of the girls in my class, she was probably in her mid-20s. She just had like really tiny hands. <laughs> she had a lot of uh, pain and strain from you know, when you're in the class, you're, you're working that clutch a lot because you're not really doing a whole lot of distance riding. You're a tool around this course that they set up with cones and everything. And it's, it's a lot of work in that clutch. Because her hands were really small, the distance from her palm to reaching the levers was really uncomfortable for her. If you have smaller hands, guy or gal, it's great to consider customizing your bike a little bit and getting maybe shorter levers or levers that curve in a little bit or seeing if you can adjust your stock levers to accommodate a smaller hand size. So that's another physical way that being a female rider is different than being a male rider. And then of course, on the whole, women tend to weigh less than men too. So sometimes they want lighter weight bikes for that reason. I know for myself, I wasn't really interested when I was first picking out my first bike or my second bike, which is this one, I definitely preferred bikes that were in the 400 pound range as opposed to the 500 plus round pound range. You know, I have ridden heavier bikes and I made it work, but it's just true that it's easier to handle a lighter weight bike to pick it up if you tip it over and to build up confidence on it if you're somewhat lacking in that. It's always an adjustment period getting accustomed to your bike uh, if it's a new experience for you. I've just liked lighter weight bikes and I know a part of it is probably because I myself am a lighter weight person. <laughs> if I think of anything else, I'll have to splice it in. I think that pretty much covers it for most of the stature related concerns of being a female rider, which is different and most people have to consider that. I mean, it's like that if you're a shorter rider, you're probably not going to be hopping on a KTM. It's just, uh, most people don't really want to do that. Most people want to ride a bike that's a comfortable height for them. So now the kind of juicier bit, maybe the more interesting part is like the social slash, oh my God, please, thank you. <laughs> the social slash experience part of being a female rider, because that's probably the thing that most people ask questions about. So for me, some of this stuff isn't really top of the dome because I don't really socialize with randos that much anymore, especially during this pandemic. But even in the first place, I just don't really like meet that many people who bother me about this kind of stuff or people who have limiting beliefs or assumptions in that kind of way. But I know that when I first started riding, there were a lot of things that felt kind of specific to being a female rider. So one of them is the amount of resistance involved in getting into riding. I have like family members that ride. It's kind of just around my life and friends that ride and stuff. And it was all fun and games when they did it. Obviously, most family members were moderately concerned, but nothing crazy. And then lo and behold, when I want to get into it, suddenly everyone is full of resistance. They say, oh my gosh, like it's too dangerous. You shouldn't do that. I'm like, well, what about them? <laughs> is it too dangerous for them too? Or is it just dangerous for me? I first wanted to start riding when I was in college, but I kind of just, it was, it was kind of a lot of, a lot of commentary I had to deal with from people 
who were just thinking that was the craziest thing ever. So, you know, I saved up and I did it right after college anyways. And when my mom found out, she cried. And a lot of people were just like really worried about me. And obviously that's not a misplaced concern, but I think people just get really worried about FEMA motorcyclists. And I don't know if it's literally because they think that you don't have the skills to ride or just because people like worry about girls more than they worry about the safety of men. So I don't really know where that comes from, but either way, there's a lot of resistance. People will try to discourage you from doing it. So I feel like the people, the kinds of women who get into riding tend to be a little bit, I don't wanna say countercultural, but they're the type of people who aren't afraid of a little resistance, who aren't afraid of being nonconformist. It's like, you're not gonna be a conformist really and become a female motorcycle, female motorcyclist if it's not an acceptable thing to do where you're from and, and for a lot of women it's like not acceptable in their community or in their family or in their region whatever depending on your cultural upbringing or situation there can be tons of resistance if you want to ride a bike as a woman so that's one big experiential slash societal difference between male and female motorcyclists i think men i mean pretty much anyone who gets into riding is going to get some resistance people oh my gosh this wind <laughs> People get worried about you, people think it's risky, people think you're crazy. I think sometimes women get that flack just a little bit more. Another thing on the unfortunate end of side effects of being a female rider is, is all the attention you get. And I guess some of it's fine. <laughs> it's people wanting to be your friend and thinking it's exciting and cool that you ride. But a lot of it's just like awkward. <laughs> You know, you pull into bike night and it feels like everyone's staring at you and sometimes you don't know. You're like, okay, is it because people like my bike? Is it because they can tell I'm a girl? It just feels like there's all these eyes on you and it's, it's hard to ignore. And a really negative kind of manifestation of that is being harassed and followed while you're on the bike. I don't know how many people have had this experience, but it happened to me more when I had my Honda Rebel of all things than it did on this bike. I don't know if people just like believe my legitimacy more on the Ducati or I think People who don't ride see the Honda Rebel and they think it's like a little Harley. They think it's like a baby Harley and they think it's like very cool. I don't even know if they think it's a baby Harley. They think it's a full-fledged Harley. And they just think like, oh, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you ride a cool looking little bike? And they just buy the shit out of you. It just happens to me way less on my Ducati and I really can't figure out why. I know this bike really suits me so maybe I just look too legit to quit and they don't bother me but on the Rebel, I really got harassed. <laughs> I tell you what, I had been followed to the grocery store once by some guy and I had to get rid of him and it was just brutal. And I got followed several blocks by these people speeding and screaming at me from their car window while I was just on like a, a main drag of a street. You know, this is middle of the day stuff. It's just like, you know, people yelling at you from the window I guess other times I remember on this bike, someone told me to like be careful on that thing or something, which is not like, that's not harassment. <laughs> that's just someone, I guess, making conversation. But sometimes you really do get shockingly hassled on the bike as a female rider. And you can pretty much assume it's because you're a girl, because why would these guys be following you in their car? I know my brother has gotten harassed in on his bike, but it tends to just be people making snide comments, but it's a bit different. <laughs> you can tell the tone when, I don't even know, <laughs> this whole situation. And then that's just in person. The online space is a different ball game too even because in the online space, it seems that everyone just wants to like sexualize you. <laughs> I don't know, that, that's probably just being a woman online any which way. But when you have a a majority male audience, it's just compounded. What else do we have? What are some good differences between being male and female motorcycle? Like, I suppose in the same vein as getting excess attention that sometimes is often undesired, that definitely gets you some positive attention too. People find you interesting, people wanna talk to you, they wanna know what you're all about, they wanna talk to you about your bike, they wanna know how you got into it, so that can be cool, I think if you're a female motorcyclist and you're looking for friends, just literally go to any event. And people, you know, you're an outlier. People find you interesting and want to talk to you. I think even, even with male motorcyclists, if you have a unique bike that people are interested in, if you did some really custom stuff, 
or if you just kind of are serving a look, you got a good outfit on. Those are all sorts of different ways to like make friends and make conversation with people. And if you're like me and you need a metered amount of human interaction, uh, you don't have to talk to anybody at all. <laughs> and another positive experience portion of being a female motorcyclist is the uh, community building amongst other women. I've made tons of friends just from the fact that I have a bike and I'm a girl and I look for other <laughs> women with bikes online and it's just way easier to slide into the DMs, follow, have conversations because you have this cool other thing in common like it'd be kind of random approaching someone whose photos were only just them hanging out with their buddies, going to the beach, making friends online as a female motorcyclist and, and linking up with other women is pretty straightforward and it's pretty great. I know for myself as an introvert, I also like the fact that the friendships are somewhat seasonal and they're not uh, full on. I find it hard to, I find it hard to maintain relationships that need a lot of time and attention. <laughs> I mean, unless they're literally like family and best friends. But when it comes to casual friends, like I can't really be talking to people every week. <laughs> it's a little bit too much. Being on the bike is a perfect thing <laughs> to spend quality time with people. And they know that it's just kind of, it's casual, it's, it's nothing too crazy. And, and it's easy to just put up a little blast on your Instagram account and be like, who wants to ride? It's just, it's way more casual than individually seeking people out and be like, do you want to go to brunch with me? It's like, want to ride to brunch with a couple of people? And they're like, heck yeah. <laughs> so that's definitely a positive when it comes to being a female motorcyclist. Overall, the, the positives obviously outweigh the negatives or else we wouldn't still be doing this. I think most of us just want to live our lives and mind our business. You guys are going to have to let me know what are your pros and cons and some of the differences that you've noticed between male and female motorcyclists. You know, keep it nice. I'd love to hear other women's experiences because sometimes I don't want to talk about this stuff because I just feel like my experience is such an anomaly. I am not as social as other people and so I encounter less of the baloney I think. <laughs> In real life I tend to have really great motorcycle related experiences and most of the time I'm just riding my, myself doing my own thing so all that societal cultural stuff plays no role in me just being on the bike and having a grand old time that kind of stuff is always secondary to your experience of being a rider being on a bike having the time of your life <laughs> and being safe and enjoying the road so in the end we're all people <laughs> and our different experiences make it all more interesting and i'd love to hear and share just like more experiences of riding. I mean, people who are in Malaysia have a different experience of riding than people in Texas. And people in Texas have a different experience than people in Milwaukee. I mean, there's so many different ways. Oh, look at the horses. Oh, hello, I don't wanna scare them. But they're, they're tough, they're not worried about it. These distinctions aren't meant to alienate other people. They're meant to uh, network people, to be honest, and to just share sharing is caring i mean short riders have different experiences uh larger riders have different experiences yeah i've had people dm me asking about like if they're too big for the kind of bike that i have and i'm like oh that's a good question because my experience is just as this uh five five and a half female rider in wisconsin and occasionally riding elsewhere but you know it, it is different and i hope that you all come to appreciate that <laughs> So I think we'll end it here. It's a gorgeous day. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, ride safe. And by the way, if you haven't, you gotta go check out my website, greatlakesupplyco.com. I made all these gorgeous designs of motorcycle and cafe and visibility inspired gear, t-shirts, mugs, accessories, patches. Go check those out. And if you're not interested in that, you should at the very least subscribe. Alright, see you next time. Love you, goodbye.